This idea began with one simple question. Have we confused our destiny with our assignment? What is the Christian destiny? To go to heaven. What is the Christian assignment? To bring heaven. A collision. It is a pessimistic paradox to express heaven as anything other than impossible to pass up. Those who think they don't want our heaven don't know our heaven. Our callousing culture continues to shift further and further from the Father. As prodigalism infects every sector, our faith has less and less to offer. Our faith offers less and less to hope for. Us believers need to remember the care of the soul, the recovery of the vulnerable lost, the mission to spread hope to a hopeless people. This is not an exclusive boys and girls club. It's for the literal life of the world. Faith before death is not the goal. Faith instead of death is. We shouldn't subscribe to the notion that the clock is ever ticking towards a finale and one day the soul will sleep. The afterlife is not a metaphysical barrel of monkeys. Heaven isn't an ethereal echo chamber. It's to usher in the restoration of his kingdom that earth will be restored, remade, returned to Edenic perfection. Death is not a gateway to heaven. Life is. We bring the kingdom of heaven, overlay it here on the earth as it is in heaven. Heaven was in the ocean during the stormy night. The disciples grabbed a plank to hold on for dear life, but Jesus blessed the storm, calmed the seas, offered the peace and prosperity of his presence. Serenity in the spiritual sensation paired with presence and power inside the moving Holy Spirit. Divinity manifested, not safe, but good. The apostolic power is to emit an atmosphere that flows from your very bones. Like how Peter's shadow healed in ministry, two worlds combine, light and dark, and light always wins. One of the most disturbing cliches of our generation is, I don't want to go to heaven. Hell sounds like much more fun. Not wanting to go to heaven, the religious may scoff or drop their draw. The preposterous a sentiment. How blasphemic. But dig deeper into how someone could say such a thing. How someone could wish for what lacking heaven brings and weep with a suffering servant who knows the alternative. There is a system of lies spreading to misrepresent eternity, and by the way, when you believe the lie, you empower the liar. Lies like heaven is in the clouds, floating around, playing harps, boring disembodiment like a ghost in humanity, it will be the ultimate exclusion from fun. Ancient Greeks loved the idea of disembodied spirits, hovering and lurking, forever still, Cupid as an archetype for our afterlife, meddling in earthly affairs like a lucid, envious spirit. They will tell you heaven comes after life, that your time here has an end, that the clock is ticking, time counts down every second until it's over, earth is forever out of your grasp, death manifests the gap, the tractor beam pulls you home, but where is home if you've never been there? The truth remains though, the blessed hope. Heaven will not yank you out of here. No, this will be heaven and earth purified, dignified, cleansed of the hurt and the loss. Our bodies won't be the only thing made new. No, the entire universe will rejuvenate. Humanity was placed on earth, the perfect earth, without pain or suffering once before, walking in holy matrimony with the marriage feast everlasting. The beauty of creation flowed through our very bones, our veins, highways for celestia. Everything was, was perfection, nothing lacking. Eden, heaven on earth, but then sin entered through the fall of man. Humanity and history scorn, torn from hopeful stagnancy of happiness and cast into painful perseverance. 
Eden cast out her hideous parasite. Man flown into the world of drug, sex, and rock and roll, house parties, and Super Bowl barbecues, leaving Eden led to less fun. So why go back until a blessed hope to come? People will ask, well, what happened to those who died before Jesus came, before Jesus redeemed? And I remind you to remember time and what time means. See, for us, time moves only one direction, linearly. But for God, time isn't a straight line. No, it's always flowing. Maybe it's a circle flowing around and around, or a book overlapping and stacking with reality and moments. The idea is Jesus Christ, Yeshua, came at one moment to die for all moments. Heaven is our hope. How blessed the assurance it is, not insurance against hellfire, the promise of presence, living hope in light of an earth lacking, counterculture in a way that attacks the stabbing, repetitive strain of disappointment, the crippling act of masking, the time stream slackening, the blessed assurance remains our mark to press on towards, well, not exactly the mark, more like the fuel to get us there, but get us where? Harness the power by being empowered. Blessed hope as a stand against cancer, murder, injustice, racism, and white supremacy, sexism, abuse, and the generational patriarchy. Heaven is our hope because it is our world reimagined. A what if scenario that removes the original sin. Heaven will be our world without the pain, without the disappointment where tears will never fall again, where fears will go to hell, where God will not be evidenced through faith and perseverance, but where God will be together with us in the natural, where we will know the secrets of the universe. Everything we know will be made clear. We'll finally understand. Finally, Imago Dei will resolve into creation with Creator, reunited with the Timekeeper. Heaven is moving in. Our restoration movement is working. Earth will return to her previous perfection and the redeemed will walk the earth forevermore. What is our salvation for? For the literal life of the world, not the destination, the journey.